Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to topic 3.4.4, Genetic Diversity and Adaptation from the AQA A-Level Biology Specification. As always, let's start off with a look at the specification. First we need to define genetic diversity and then we'll move on to natural selection. Then we'll move on to the different types of selection, including directional and stabilizing selection, and how these are exemplified by antibiotic resistance and human birth weights. We should also know that natural selection results in species that are better adapted to their environment, and these adaptations may be anatomical, physiological, or behavioral. So let's make a start by defining genetic diversity. Genetic diversity is the number of different alleles of genes in a population. Genetic diversity is a factor that enables natural selection to occur. The greater the genetic diversity, the more likely that individuals in a population will survive an environmental change. This is because there is a wider range of alleles, meaning that there are a wider range of characteristics. Therefore, there is a greater probability that one individual will possess a characteristic that suits it to the new conditions. Genetic diversity within a population can be increased by the following factors. First of all, genetic mutations, which lead to new alleles. Diversity can also be increased by new alleles being introduced into a population when individuals from other populations migrate into them and reproduce with them. Meiosis can also increase genetic diversity within a population, as well as random fertilization of gametes during sexual reproduction. Of these four factors, genetic mutations are the primary source of genetic variation. So let's move on to natural selection. You should learn how natural selection works and the principles are written out clearly in the specification. The mark schemes that I've seen are more or less word for word the same as those given in the specification, so it's vital to know this off by heart. First of all, new alleles are formed by random mutations in genetic material. Many mutations are harmful, which may mean that the individual with the mutated allele dies out or the mutation is corrected by the proofreading mechanisms of the cell. Sometimes, however, an allele or a combination of alleles gives an individual an advantage, leading to increased chance of survival and reproductive success. These individuals then pass on their advantageous alleles to the next generation. Over many generations, the new allele increases in frequency in the population. Note that mutated alleles will only be passed on if the mutations occur in the gametes. There is variation in every trait caused by random mutations in genetic material. Continuous variation causes a normal distribution when you measure a given trait in individuals of a population. The specification wants us to know different types of selection. There are three different types, directional, stabilizing and disruptive selection. This part of the specification wants us to know directional and stabilizing selection and disruptive selection will be covered later on in the specification when we look at evolution and speciation. So let's start off with directional selection. This is when individuals with alleles for characteristics of an extreme type are more likely to survive and reproduce. The specification mentions antibiotic resistance in bacteria as an example, so we'll look at this in just a moment. In directional selection, the mean shifts in the direction of the more favorable trait. The mean is equally common and there is the same distribution about the mean. For questions on natural selection, mark schemes usually follow the same general pattern. You would very likely be given an example of a trait and then be told that this trait is favored in natural selection. Then you'd be asked to explain how over time the frequency of this trait increases in the population. First state that the trait which you were given in the question has a genetic basis. Random mutations over time mean that there is genetic variation within the species. Next, you should explain how this trait is of an advantage. And for this, you need to mention the selection pressure, i.e. why some individuals would die and why some would not, and state the type of selection, i.e. is it directional, stabilizing or disruptive selection. 
then you should say that individuals with this allele are more likely to survive, reproduce and pass on this allele to their offspring. Over many generations, the frequency of this allele increases in the population and so therefore does this trait. So let's have a look at the example of antibiotic resistance in bacteria. Antibiotic resistance has a genetic basis. Random mutations over time mean that there is genetic variation in resistance to the antibiotic. Some individuals will have alleles that give them greater antibiotic resistance. When the population is then exposed to the antibiotic, our selection pressure being surviving exposure to the antibiotic, bacteria with alleles that give them less resistance are killed. The more resistant bacteria survive, reproduce and pass on the allele for antibiotic resistance to their offspring. The frequency of this allele increases in the population and so therefore does this trait. Finally, we also have stabilizing selection. This is when individuals with alleles for characteristics towards the middle range are more likely to survive and reproduce. Extremes of phenotype are at a disadvantage. The example mentioned in the specification is human birth weights. In stabilizing selection, the mean stays the same, the mean is more common, and there is a smaller distribution about the mean. So let's have a look at human birth weights. Human birth weight has a genetic basis. Random mutations over time mean that there is genetic variation in birth weight. The selection pressure in this case is surviving to a reproductive age. Very small babies are less likely to survive because they have a large surface area to volume ratio, so are more likely to experience problems with heat loss, for example, and have a weakened immune system. Very large babies, on the other hand, can cause problems in childbirth. Therefore, individuals with alleles for moderate birth weights are most likely to survive, reproduce and pass on their alleles for moderate birth weights to their offspring. The frequency of the allele for moderate birth weights increases in the population and so therefore does this trait. Note that natural selection results in species that are better adapted to their environment. These adaptations may be behavioural, this is the way an organism acts that increase its chances of survival, they may be physiological, which are the processes inside an organism's body that increase its chances of survival, and finally adaptations may be anatomical, which are the features of an organism's body that increase its chances of survival. Great, so we've defined genetic diversity, we've had a look at natural selection, we've covered directional and stabilizing selection, as well as the two examples of antibiotic resistance and human birth weights, and we've also covered how natural selection results in species that are better adapted to their environment, and how these adaptations may be anatomical, physiological, or behavioral. That would be it for now guys, thanks for watching, please feel free to comment, add any ideas or suggestions, subscribe, next time we'll be looking at species and taxonomy.